Hey, how are you doing? My name is Oliver James Webb and I'm going to be your professional racing driver and driver coach for your Wejo experience. So we've got some cars behind me, we've got a racetrack and we're going to be heading out onto the track to capture multiple points of data, have some fun and see how that data relates to the real world. So if you want to get your Wejo helmet on, let's go ahead to the car. We've got a uh, couple of laps to ourselves around here and uh, we can uh, talk you through the track and talk you through the different aspects of the car and uh, how that connects to uh, what we're doing today. Okay. Uh, a few hairpins on this track that require some heavy braking, some harsh accelerations through some of the chicanes around here. So we've got a GPS trace, it shows our acceleration, our braking, will show our different driving lines and styles which also then relates back to the real world where we can see all the different cars that are on the road at the same time and the different routes that they're mm. taking. How does Wejo use things like braking events to help on the road in real world applications? How is it used? So here on the track obviously we can demonstrate the harsh braking zones uh -huh. with no other cars around but where that then applies in the real world with all the other cars on the road at one time is it can predict not only a buildup of traffic but also use that data over time to predict hot spot of areas where harsh braking zones happen and where potential accidents can happen. Therefore preventing not only incidents or even as far as injuries, but also lower the amount of traffic that gets built up in popular areas. Mm. So I mean it tells you where you might have road closures or maybe accidents, is that what it can do? Yeah, so it can predict ahead not only just as simple as where traffic is building up, but also uh -huh. build uh, a datum over time for uh, cities and for, for areas oh, where yeah. particular hotspots of harsh braking zones happen and how we can change that. If a road closure suddenly come up and a particular zone that's normally a 60 zone, let's say, all of a sudden has a load of static cars that have harsh braked and stopped and come to a standstill, you can be rerouted and then also find out then why that's happening in the future to help make that traffic flow better. Yeah, I can see how you can use that for congestion management making sure that you can potentially reroute traffic, I suppose, if you find out that you have a adjusted area. Yeah, exactly. Now that we're talking about those points, we've got a, a big acceleration zone that's happening here. Now on the racetrack, of course, that's a benefit. Now for things like insurance companies, yeah. they'll want to know if you have a driver profile of someone who's accelerating a lot or even the other way around, which helps us, I'd say. As a young supercar owner myself, we're in a nice supercar today, I want to lower my policies and I'm quite a boring driving or driver on the road so what's great there is I can build a driver profile with that insurance company using the data from Wejo which will lower my insurance and give me a better policy for my cars on the road. So it can work both ways. It's good for me as a driver because then it can actually change my premiums. Exactly yeah so they'll learn how you drive, take that data and then say okay it's not a set your 20s, 30 years old and you own a supercar, this is what we charge you. It can be more personalized using that data and go, actually, no, you've got a very good driver profile of non-harsh acceleration zones of very consistent, safe driving. And you can apply that data to then save you money. The insurance companies, how else do they use that data? Do they use it for anything else other than Yes. Acceleration and location or? Yeah, so as well as the acceleration zones, we've also got a, a smooth driving profile. We can look at the different lines taken through a corner. Now, of course, on a racetrack, you need to get through a corner at a certain speed, but smoothness is key not only on the racetrack, but also in the real world on the road. Now, if, if you take those driving lines and those GPS data of those lines through those roads, you can tell the smoothness of a driver wow. as well as those wow. acceleration zones. I mean, the track is really smooth and it's clean. What about in the real world where there's going to be just a lot of ruts, potholes, things like that. Does this data help if you're going through harsh conditions or if you're revving your engine high? How do we use data in that regard? So yeah, we can use the data from the car, not only from the cam channels in the car that show, you know, overly unnecessary revving or, again, road conditions. Not only is it helping the insurance companies on how you drive and how safely you drive and how smoothly you drive, but also in your area, do you have bad roads and a lot of potholes and, and is that area that should be normally a 60 speed limit zone slower than that because of the condition of the road and that can then go to all sorts of different companies and avenues to council that need to repave roads and do we need to adjust our schedules of okay well this 
road normally gets repaved every 15 years, but we need to start doing it every five because yeah. we've noticed the average speed down this road is 40, and why is that? Can you use that data to help you better understand the maintenance schedules, warranty, and things of that nature? Very much so, and where that really applies and where that really saves costs for big companies is let's say like haulage companies or delivery companies let's say rather than waiting for an issue to come up with a with a certain schedule they have or these potholes in the road causing punctures this data can help them better learn when do we need to adjust these schedules to prevent the cars having these issues or bad roads that can be avoided that usually have these potholes adjusting the maintenance schedule therefore less issues on the lorries on the trucks uh, the cars that are involved in that company and therefore in the long run saving money. I guess those who own dealership, maintenance shops, fleet vehicles, yeah. things of that nature, right, they can help. They benefit more from the data, even more than an individual person does because they have so much more collective data yeah. over a vast spread of vehicles that the pattern becomes more reliable yeah. uh, and more accurate. And I think those fleet companies, they have to use dongles or other devices that have to capture data, right? That's a little different than what we're doing here, right? Yeah, exactly. So this is all totally wireless and gets captured without the use of having to unplug and download. Yeah. So it's a much more efficient system that then over time will just create its own uh, uh, schedule, which then the company can use for uh, saving itself money and also saving itself uh, issues with uh, delayed deliveries yeah. uh, and learning what routes tend to cause most delays and how to avoid those routes. So I feel like these kind of three pillars that we have these benefits for cross over, not only from the individual, but through to the large companies as well. Yeah, yeah. As a driver, there's probably good reasons for this data, but I can see real benefit for companies who can leverage this data for all of those things, right? Yeah, exactly. So, great job. It's pretty uh, fun out there, isn't it? We've got a cool car, great scenery. So we're going to take those uh, harsh braking zones, acceleration zones, and overlay those data traces from the GPS and from the data we've just captured on track. And we're going to go look at it in the data room and then see how that applies in the real world. Good job. Hey guys, welcome back from the track. Hopefully you've done a couple of laps around now and you've worked with the drivers to start looking at your driving data. Just to let you know though, the way that we've took the data out today is by using VBOX technology. So a VBOX is a device that's fitted after manufacture of the vehicle into the car. It's what they actually use in motor racing and actually was the original inspiration for Wejo with our founder, Richard Barlow. So that V-Box enables us to access the vehicle data and extract that for you today to talk to you a little bit about your driving style. The way that Wejo actually collects its data in the real world is through a telematics control unit that's natively embedded in the vehicle. So this is fit at manufacture, it's not an aftermarket. So think of it like a smartphone on wheels. It's SIM enabled and it's in the vehicle. And that telematics control unit has access to thousands of sensors, upwards of 2,000. But right now, today, Wejo collects around 200 sensors from the vehicle. So whether that's in cabin, whether that's environmental, or whether it's to do with the powertrain and the diagnostics of the vehicle. And we pull that data every one to three seconds in super low latency. So less than 60 seconds in near real time from vehicle through a depth our processing engine and out to marketplace. So if you think about your journey around the track today and you think about the other individuals here, we've started to get a good view of the track layout, the corners, how people take certain corners. And now imagine that on 95% of the roads in the US with 19 million vehicles and over 85 billion journeys that we've mapped. That's truly big data, and that's truly transforming how Wejo is enabling mobility for good.